so far we've seen how to create tables and also insert data into our tables. How do we retrieve those data that has been inserted into the table or how do we visualize or print out those data and actually see the table itself and the content of the table? The syntax to retrieve data from our table is select star from followed by the name of the table. So if we are to retrieve data from our cat table, all we need to do is type select star from cat. Let's go to our SQL server and do this. I'll go ahead and launch a new query box. And what we want to do is type select star from cat. And when we run this, it shows us our cat table and all of the data that we've inserted into the cat table. What the select keyword is saying here is, I need some information. So I want to select certain information. The star is give me all. The star there represents all. I need all of the information from the cat's table. So when we say select star from cat, it gives us all the information within that cat's table. Let's go and retrieve the information from our cat two table. So we do the same thing, select star from cat two. And when we run that, oh, my bad. When we run that, it gives us all the information from the cat two table. So we have uh, three columns, the name column, we have the age column, and we have the color column. And we have the rows, which are the records. We have Sassy, age five, color brown. We have Oscar, age four, color black. We have Coco, our youngest, age three, color pink. And we have Max, our oldest cat, cat age six, color black. There is two other tables that we created but did not insert any data into it. Let's see what that looks like. So if we go select all from, we'll check our student table with an S, student with an S. And when we run that, we see that we it shows us the columns, the first name, the last name and the age. But because we did not insert any data into it, it's just blank. We can just copy that. See, so, because we have a student two table, and we'll just run that as well. And it's the same thing. Because we did not insert any data, it's just showing us a blank table. This is where we'll try out what we've learned so far. In this course, up to this moment, we've learned how to create databases. We've learned how to use those databases that we create. And we've also learned how to create a table. We learned how to insert data into the tables we created. And we've also recently learned how to print out or view those information. So this is where you get to try your hands on what we've learned so far. The first thing I would like you to do is to delete the current pet database, which we have, which you created. So you want to delete that. Then you want to create a new database and the name of the database would be company. And then, of course, because we'll be doing more tasks within that database, you want to select that database as the database to be used. And then you want to create an employee table. The name of the table will be employee. There's going to be three columns in the table. The first column will be a first name column. And the maximum amount of characters you can have is 50. You would have the last name column also with 50 characters maximum and you'd have the age 
and then you'd insert information. The first information you'd insert would be the first name, Jerry, and then you insert last name, which is Fisher, and the age will be 34. So this would be a single insert. And then you insert a second person, the information of a second person into the employee table. The employee's first name is Julian, the employee's last name is Hugo, and his age is 30. And then we'll insert, the final insert will be a multiple insert. So we have three records that has to be inserted at the same time. We have first name, last name, and age. We have John Morris, 25. Susan Frederico, 30. Mike Smith, 36. Once you do that, you want to print out the employee table to display all of the records that has been inserted into the employee table. I would suggest you pause the video. And once you've completed the task, you can continue from there. If you have any troubles with any of the tasks, not to worry, because we would um, tackle this together as well. I hope that went all right. So let's um, try our hands together on the task. I'll go ahead and open a new query box. And the first thing we need to do is to delete our current pet database. To do that, we type drop database and then the name of the database which is pets now when we run this query what happens we get an error message that says cannot drop database pets because it is currently in use. in other words for you to be able to delete a database you can't currently be working within that database so you have to be in another database to delete um, an existing database that you're working in. So what we can do is we know we have a master database. If we look at the list of our databases, the system databases, we have the master, the modem, MSDB, and TempDB. So we can always just switch into one of those database and then drop the pets, the pets database. So I switch to another database, I would first close the other sessions I have opened because all of these are still active sessions. So I'll go ahead and close those. And now we can say use, we can use the master database. Use. And now we have our database has been changed to master. If we click here, we also have the drop down in which we can switch from here as well. Now, if we go ahead and drop our pets database, that should work. So the next step is to create our new database company. Now, since we don't need this code anymore, which I'll still keep it there. So we just go create database. That'll be company. Now we want to use that database. And our next task is to create a table. I believe the name of the table is employee. And our first column is first name. And this will be a varcar, and the length is 50. And our second column is last name, which is varcar as well, 50. That's the maximum character of the first and last name. And then we have age, which is an integer. Now we'll close our parenthesis, some colon. Now we can execute that. Let's see what's the next step. So we created our table. The next step is to enter some information. First name Jerry, last name Fisher, age 34. 
So we go ahead and insert some data into our table. Insert into employee. And what do we want to insert? We want the first name. We want the last name. We want the age. And what are the values that we need? It's Jerry Fisher, 34. First name. There's Jerry. Fisher. 34. When we run this, that will be inserted into our data, into our table. And then we can just copy this. Then I'm just going to change the values because it's the same thing. And then it's Julian Hugo. First name is Julian. And then the last name is Hugo. I believe it's age steady. And we can execute this. The next step is to do a multiple insert. So we'll be inserting three records at the same time. Here we go. Set into employee first name and the last name. We have the age and the values. John Morris twenty five. close that and then we have a comma to insert the second record and then Susan Frederico Teddy and the last record would be Mike Smith 36 so we have Mike Then just align this, this tab, enter. Now we can run this, execute. Okay, so the next step will be to print out our employee table. And to do that, we just need to do a select statement, select all from employee. And when we run this, we have our table, we have a first name, the last name, and the ages of all of our employees.